Okay, maybe we start again with our next speaker, Fabio Abruzzi from UNC Chapel Hill and UPenn with 60 superconformal field theories and the predictivity of F theory via massive type 2A. So first of all, I would like to thank the organizer for uh, putting uh, together this uh, very nice conference and uh, for inviting me to speak here. So today's talk is based on a paper that came out in, in uh, December uh, in collaboration with uh, Marco Fazzi, who is uh, based at Technion, and also on uh, some uh, uh, recent paper. So here is a list of, uh, of paper which uh, are important for my talks uh, in a chronological order. So let me begin by giving you some motivation. So why uh, is it interesting to study 60 CFTs? Well, uh, by num classification, uh, these are the uh, theories um, where uh, a superconformal algebra, uh, so the highest dimensional theory where a superconformal algebra exists. Moreover, these are strongly coupled theories and uh, non-Lagrangian. So are, they are very difficult to study via standard techniques. And for, the re for this reason, uh, string theory and uh, the SCFT might help us in understanding them. And uh, they also, uh, since they are the highest dimensional superconformal field theories, they can uh, lead to uh, lower dimensional theories, uh, uh, conformal, uh, conformal field theories and quantum field theories uh, by compatification and uh, by RG flow in a Wilsonian sense. Uh, as I mentioned, it's a, a, an handful way to study these 60 CFTs is by, uh, by using uh, string theory techniques. So uh, there, have, there have been uh, very nice works in F theory and also in the dual perspective, which is M theory and type 2A, uh, uh, together with uh, the SCFT. Uh, but there have been uh, other attempts to study this theory. So one is uh, using the elliptic genera to study the BPS uh, uh, tensionless strings, uh, which, is, uh, which is very useful to understand this object, these uh, lie states, uh, the conf uh, superconformal points of 60 CFTs, and also some attempts of, uh, of uh, localization of these six-dimensional CFTs. And more recently, also the bootstrap has started to thinking about this. So can we bootstrap uh, these six-dimensional 1,0 theories? Can we get, gain some prediction? Can we uh, uh, prove the, their existence? And, but what my, the aim of, the, of this talk is basically to show that, the, so the, my talk will be focused on the, on the upper part, and my, the aim is to sh show that these are basically working together, the F theory perspective and the uh, two-way uh, ADSFT perspective. Um, so the outline of my talk would be, uh, I will uh, uh, introduce uh, 60 CFTs from F theory and from uh, uh, the uh, dual M theory uh, and two-way perspective. I will, talk, I will talk about the gravity duals at the S7 solutions. And finally, I will, um, uh, I will uh, tell you what we can compute with these two, uh, two uh, string theory description about 60 CFTs. Uh, so let me review 60 CFTs in a, uh, from, uh, from F theory in a slide. So we compatify F theory uh, on a non-compact uh, Calabi-Yau freefold, uh, which is elliptically fiber. So you have a singular base, which is C2 mod gamma, where gamma is a subgroup of, a subgroup of uh, U2, and you have a, an elliptic fiber. Uh, but to understand the theory, at least an at an effective level, you have to... Uh, move in the tensor branch, so you resolve the singularity, and uh, resolving the singularity means like introducing a collection of P1 with uh, uh, their self-intersection, which is given by this number, minus n. And moreover, you will have an elliptic fiber, which can be singular, and the singularity of this elliptic fiber on, on each of these curves will uh, detect your gauge or flavor symmetry. So to summarize, you will have a uh, vector multiple from seven brains on co compact curves. You will have hypers at the point intersections, and you will have tensor multiple, which are given by, um, 
the volume, and the tensor scalar is given by the volume of P1s, uh, and the, the two-form uh, the the two potential is given by the integration of uh, uh, the 2BC4 uh, potential on, on this P1. And uh, effectively, this theory will look like a generalized linear quiver, where the gauge group can be also exceptional group, since we are in F-theory, so exceptional symmetries are allowed, and also uh, empty groups are allowed. And the prediction here is that uh, at the singular point, uh, this, uh, there is a CFT. Uh, so you, this is a CFT uh, with, uh, uh, this theory has no scale. And moreover, there will be tensionless string at this point, And the tensionless string will be given by the free brain wrapping these, uh, these compact curves. Uh, and when you, since their tension goes as, like, like the volume of P1, they will be tensional when you collapse them. Um, the T-dual perspective is uh, the type 2A perspective. And as uh, Alessandro explained this morning, you can think about this uh, um, F-theory geometry as a long sausage. With, uh, so basically, see uh, a circle vibration over a line where the circle shrinks at, at some points. And when you t-dualize this configuration, what you get at the singular point, you get uh, uh, like N and five, uh, N, NS5 brains uh, coinciding at this point, and then you will, will have K D6 brains uh, going in and out. And the resolution works in a similar way. You have to separate the NS5 brains in this way, and at this uh, point, uh, you will have a uh, weakly coupled description in the tensor branch where the D6 brain will... Uh, will uh, give you the gauge symmetry, and the NS5 will give you um, hypermultiplets together with tensor multiplets. And this configuration, this particular configuration, uplift to NN5 brain on uh, R5 mod NA singularity, but in general you can take an IDE singularity. A generalization of this is uh, considering massive type 2A, so now we have a Roman's mass which is uh, different from zero, and which uh, means that we can introduce D8 brains. And the resolution, uh, the resolution in tensor branch, uh, we give this, uh, this kind of theories. Well, now we, we will have uh, D8 brains in, uh, in, the, in the brain diagram, intersecting D6s. So let me explain you how heuristically you can think about the near horizon limit. So imagine, so this is the configuration at the conformal uh, point, the type 2A configuration at the conformal point, and imagine to wrap a sphere around the NS5 brains. So what you will get is basically uh, that this, this sphere will back react with the D6 brain intersecting it. Uh, so the sphere is in the 6, 7, 8, and 9 dimension. It's, it's a sphere in, in, this four, is in these R4. And uh, so this uh, D6 brain will back react with this sphere and will bend this sphere uh, so such that this will be, uh, this will give a uh, D6 singularity. And the number of uh, NS5 brains translates into the, quant uh, the quantization of the H flux. A similar thing can be done for uh, when you have D8. When you have D8, you actually have bound state of D6, D8. You wrap a sphere in, uh, in these, uh, in these uh, six, seven, eight, nine directions, and this sphere will uh, back react with these bound states, and uh, the resulting solution will, uh, uh, will be this banded, uh, with band, with this banded free sphere uh, where the, the bending is uh, in the locus where these D8, D6, D8 bound states are. But this is not actually how we get the ADS7 solution, we study uh, the, type, uh, the, uh, the type 2 uh, supersymmetry equation. And at the end of the day, well, after some year, we get a one-line classification of them. And the classification is as simple as this, as this ordering a differential equation. Uh, of course, you have a metric, and uh, flux is a dilaton, and all, all this function will depend on this, uh, on this alpha, alpha function. And you can see that this is an S2 vibration over a, 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 an interval. The interval coordinates it's E. And the S2 is basically uh, telling you that there is an SU2 R uh, symmetry. Or in, in gravity, uh, uh, this is an isometry. Uh, you also must 
impose continuity of uh, the metric dilaton and uh, fluxes. And this impose that alpha is a C-free uh, R function and that alpha double dot is a piecewise linear uh, function. So by just solving this equation. So an example is this one. So alpha is a, a linear function which interpolates between uh, the gauge group order of the dual theory. So F0 will give you the slope of these linear functions. And when uh, this slope changes, uh, so F0 changes, uh, you will have the D8 brain locus. So since F0 sources the D8 brains. And let me also remind you that there are no to, to be a DS7 solutions, since uh, basically the supersymmetry equation will, uh, 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 you will end up with, this, uh, co with these constraints, which is not solvable. So, but let me go back to uh, type 2A and explain you more about the correspondence between the solution and the, and the theories. So, uh, let me pick back the solution, and uh, this would be the, uh, the dual uh, resolved uh, uh, brain diagram. And, and, and this will be the, the effective quiver description. So, the D6 brains are the, uh, give the gauge group. Uh, so, in this case, uh, these are all SU gauge groups. And you will have a, uh, so the D8 brain will be given by the difference of, uh, of the slope. And uh, as, as we can see, we will have uh, the, the, the D8 brain where the, the slope changes. So in, on the black dots of this solution, and here would be the corresponding D8 brains. And in general, the quiver is uh, such that you, you will have a, uh, two tails, which are massive tail and also a, a, a plateau where the, the order of the, the gauge group are constant. And on the two tails, the, the gauge group are, are, go, are growing uh, towards the middle. With the orientifold, this changes a bit. Uh, so the, the number of the six, which is proportional to the gauge, which is equal to the gauge group order, is basically a dual coxeter number for, uh, for SU, whereas for uh, for uh, SO and uh, uh, USP, when, when you include the orientifold, uh, this is shifted by, by some, um, some integers due to the, to the charges of, uh, of the uh, O6 plus and O6 uh, minus plane here. Uh, so, so far, I, I show you an, exam an example and of, a, of a solution of uh, that uh, one-line equation, ordinary differential uh, equation. But Actually, the classification turns out to be a um, boundary condition problem. So in order to classify all the solutions, you have to classify all the boundary conditions. So one first boundary, and this boundary condition, of course, are given in terms of the derivative of, uh, of this alpha function. Uh, so one first boundary condition is where you have a D6 and, uh, uh, at the north pole and a regular, a regular point at the south pole. So a regular point is when uh, alpha double dot and alpha vanishes together at the south pole. You can have D6 and D6 on, at the two poles when you just uh, shift up the double alpha dot function. You can also have uh, O6 plane uh, boundary condition, and this when alpha does, uh, does not vanish at, at one pole. And uh, this configuration will be uh, dual to the brain system where you have an alternative sequence of O6 plus and O6 minus plane. And you have an also another boundary condition. And this boundary condition is uh, similar to the previous one, but now alpha dot is vanishing at the south pole. And here, uh, the, the, the geometry has a boundary. And this boundary is basically a O8 plane. And uh, this, uh, this solution is dual to, to the massive string studied in this paper. But in, uh, in this work, we study new boundary condition. And we found two new boundary conditions. So one is, uh, the first one is a generalization of, uh, of this massive string condition, where you have also D6 brain intersecting the O8 plane. Uh, I just want to recall that uh, in a, the physical solution is basically uh, uh, consistent with considering just half of the brain diagram uh, due to the oriented for projection of the E8 plane. So the geometry of the solution is the one of alpha of a sphere over free sphere. And finally, you can also uh, shift alpha, uh, one of the, uh, at the south pole, you can also shift alpha, uh, the final alpha up in order to 
allows for, allow for intersection of O8 plane with O6 plane uh, in, the, in the brain diagram. But, uh, so these are uh, all the boundary conditions. But you can also uh, start ge constructing general solution by uh, uh, gluing this boundary condition and also uh, gluing like left and right tails and uh, uh, massless region. And so, so far I've described the, the, um, the, tier, the 60 theories uh, constructed from a string theory and uh, the, uh, this, uh, this uh, ADS7 solution. But what we can, can we compute uh, with them? And uh, so prediction. So what are the predictions that you can uh, study uh, with, uh, with this construction? So first of all, you can compute the conformal anomaly. So in the 60, uh, by using like a fatty field theory techniques also, uh, and also like uh, uh, brain uh, intuition, you can compute a uh, anomaly polynomial. An anomaly polynomial is uh, uh, given in terms of the curvature of, uh, of the R symmetry in the tangent bundle, and, where, and it was computed by this gentleman. And you can also relate the coefficient of the anomaly polynomial, which depend on the uh, data of the, your theory, to the, to the conformal anomaly in, uh, in this way. And it was, this, was the, this formula was given in, it, in this paper by this gentleman. And you can study this at, at a large number, large n, and large gauge group orders, and you will get a behavior, uh, a similar behavior. So the n cube behavior and the order of the, and the uh, dual Coxeter number square uh, behavior, where eta is the inverse, uh, is basically uh, minus the inverse of the intersection matrix of uh, the F theory base. Uh, what about it holographically? So we can estimate the numbers of degrees of freedom uh, by using the solution. So we can compute a uh, holographic uh, by evaluating this expression, which is the volume M3, uh, divided by G Newton. And um, this explicitly reads in, uh, this expression in terms of, uh, of the alpha uh, function of the solution, of the ADSF solution. And the, in the holographic limit, so where the uh, gauge group orders and the number of tensor or NS5 brains go, go to infinity, but their ratio uh, stays constant. Um, you basically can prove that, uh, so these guys uh, prove that for uh, SU quivers, this match the field expectation. And, but in this paper, we extend it including all type of ADS7 solution and all type of orientifold, so all type of boundary condition and gluing uh, 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 solution parts together. So instead of giving you the general uh, proof, let me show you some examples. So some new examples. So you can take uh, this example, which has a uh, 08 plus or 8 minus in the middle, and this is basically uh, it, it has an SU uh, or SO gauge group and a chain of SU, uh, uh, sorry, sorry, USP and SO gauge group and a chain of SU groups. And the solution is uh, the, the one of alpha, uh, the topology of the solution is uh, alpha of a free sphere with, uh, where the, the boundary is here uh, signal the, present, the presence of a no 8 wall. And this is uh, coincident with the fact that you have the 8 here. And you can compute the holographic anomaly from the field a gravity solution, and you get the same answer uh, in this limit. Same thing for uh, this other example. So I'm giving you just the, so this, the solution looks similar to this, uh, but I'm giving you just the, the brain diagram here. So in this case, we'll have also O6 in, uh, plus and O6 minus planes uh, extending in, in this direction, and you will have an SU group here and altern an alternating chain of SO and USB groups here. And uh, the holographic anomalies uh, goes like this. And this, uh, uh, so the, the, the gravity um, computation matches the field theory computation. Uh, but let me, let me tell you about a mystery which is related to what Alessandro was uh, talking about this morning. So consider these two uh, theories. Uh, so consider the theory where you have an, a O8 uh, minus plus 6 in the 8 in the middle and, uh, versus the theory with an O8 plus 
in the middle. This will be the, these are two different theory with this uh, uh, gauge group in the quiver description. Uh, but it turns out that these, are, they, these have a, the same holographic anomaly. But they start differing like a lowest order of uh, n and k. So what we conclude here is that actually a DS7 solution cannot distinguish between this configuration, but eventually studying string correction to this, uh, to this solution will detect the difference because we will start adding like correction which goes with the lower order in n and k. And, but, uh, so the question here is what about F theory? And so eff the effective theory predicts that the eta, eta metric should, should be different in, uh, in such a way. But the strange fact is these minus two intersection numbers. And uh, so what is, uh, uh, how this can correspond to an intersection metric uh, in F theory with these minus two, minus, two inter in, uh, minus two intersection numbers? And uh, this might be a, uh, also a result of the paper by Alessandro and friends. Uh, where they will explain this, uh, this minus two intersection number from F theory. Um, so another interesting example is uh, this formal quiver. So this formal quiver is an alternating chain of, uh, so this is a type 2A uh, quiver, and it's an alternating chain of S, uh, SO and USP groups with, uh, with uh, negative uh, orders. So since you have negative order, this that doesn't make sense. But Nevertheless, you can compute the, you can find the ADS7 solution, and you can compute the A anomaly, uh, the holographic A anomaly. And in F theory, you have a, a totally different configuration with non-perturbative gauge groups. So look, there is a G2 and uh, also non-perturbative SU2. But you can compute the anomaly polynomial for this, and you can compute the conformal anomaly, and this will match the same result of, uh, of this, uh, uh, type 2A uh, formal configuration, or in the holographic limit, uh, the result of, uh, uh, of the solution computation. So we claim that we have the ADS7 solution dual to, the, to, this, uh, uh, to, this, uh, to the CFT given by this F-theory configuration, and that this ADS7 solution can probe this non-perturbative regime of, uh, of F-theory. So let me finally comment on the, on the holographic theorem. So the X branch flow, um, so uh, I'm talking about an, an holographic theorem uh, for the X branch flows. So you can start with this theory, which is a, a chain of SUK, uh, SUK gauge groups with uh, uh, SUK times SUK flavor symmetry. You can compute the, uh, the leading order of the uh, conformal anomaly. And this theory, uh, uh, so SU, uh, gauge, uh, SU, uh, this SUK gauge theory, uh, quiver theories, are basically described by two uh, young tableau. And this will give the number of the sixes ending on the, the number of uh, uh, the, and the ending of the eight. And you can basically send the D6s uh, between the two D8 to infinity and reach this theory. Which, which has these two tails, and the dual solution will, uh, will go like this. And you can compute the uh, AAR, and you realize that this is bigger than this. And F theory, this will be triggered by, by complex structure deformation. And here, the, the theory I, I was describing before is just an intermediate step where A sits between this uh, UV and uh, IR quantity. So, so as you SO and uh, USP uh, uh, queer theories are labored by these two young, uh, by two young tableaus. And in F theory, uh, this will correspond to tapering data. There is another of these young tableaus, and which is partial for SO, for, uh, SO groups. And we observe that the holographic A uh, decreases along the flow. But more importantly, we, we can prove that this quantity, so the integration, this quantity, which is a volume function, actually decreases along the flow. And uh, so basically, this quantity is an integer. But the challenge here, and the open question is, what is corresponding F theory? So what is A, what is the analog of A uh, in F theory? Or 
it, it, it might be simpler to think about the, the analog of this, uh, of this integrated function, which is an integer that might be a topological, a topological uh, invariant of, your, of the geometry of F theory. So let me conclude that where we start uh, by using this string theory uh, perspective, we start an F theory perspective, we start to scratch the surface of things to compute of 60 CFTs. And we also started uh, to see that ADS7 solutions are working together with the, with the, uh, with the F theory construction. Uh, we show some evidence for the uh, holographic A theorem, but with the challenge to uh, understand this also from a, a geometric analog, from a geometric perspective in F theory. And also, it would be interesting to compute like uh, uh, data about operators and uh, defects uh, from F tier and up to A. So thank you. Thank you, Fabio. So say, as far as I understand, you have some uh, type two A solutions with uh, O6 planes and O8 planes, but so it's a massive type 2A. Right. Uh, so is the solution singular, close to the, uh, the antifold? Uh, yeah, you have a, uh, so uh, close to the pole, you have an orientifold uh, singularity. S okay, so it takes down the supergravity solution close to the orientifold? Uh, I mean, like the metric, I mean, it's not, not anymore positive definite, so something like this. I mean, the solution is uh, as, a, as a brain singularity there, but uh, you interpret the brain singularity as, uh, with the, I mean, as basically the presence of, uh, of the brain at that locus. So, but the, 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 curvature, of, the curvature at that point. Uh, no, but uh, I mean, usually the, the antifolds have a bad singularity. So you dissolve either going to M theory or like the O7s, when you go to F theory, so you have this non perturbative the solution. So in this case, you have a supergravity solution with all planes. Uh, and I would, I don't know, I'm, I'm asking if maybe it's self uh, uh, protecting against uh, strange behavior. I'm, uh, I'm just asking. I mean, I, 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 maybe I'm, uh, I mean, if, if I understand the question, I, that's, uh, I mean, there is a, the curvature of the of the of your space doesn't doesn't blow up at uh, that point. I mean, you can also always go to to a large and I mean, you can always like scale to a large and, and uh, so G strings and the curvature would be would be fine at that point. So even with orientifold in this case. Maybe another urgent question. If not, let's thank Fabio again. I was about to read the conclusion. <laughs>